Zechariah chapter 10. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. That latter rain, there's an early and latter rain. This one is in the springtime around the Passover and it helps bring the barley harvest. We're coming up to the time of Ruth. Because Ruth is out there with Boaz when they're, they're harvesting the barley so that latter grain is come. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field. And this early and latter rain is beneficial in the area of Palestine. If it came too early or too late or if it didn't come at all, there would be utter crop failure. Now, when we're putting this to the time of the second advent in the millennium, is when Jesus Christ returns, there's been no rain on the earth. Thank you, Elijah. The waters have been turned to blood. Thank you, Moses. You know, those two prophets that show up and that the Antichrist killed. So what they're doing is they're asking the Lord Jesus Christ, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Now they didn't ask Joshua. Lord, we're going in the land and we just came out of seven years tribulation, three and a half years great tribulation. There's been no rain and don't worry about that. I'll take care of that. I'm Jesus. I'm the creator. So you better not say that Jesus is not God. Not only does Jesus wipe out the enemies of Israel, but he prepares the land before they get there. He cleans it all up. For the idols has spoken vanity. And you assume by the character of what we're looking at, what's already been said is, when there's been no rain, and there's been drought in the Bible, many times, going to be drought in the tribulation period, in the great tribulation period. They've turned to idols. Rain dancers. Weather rock. El Nemo, Mother Earth. As I told you, I was in I was in summer camp one year. We had a guy, you know, he'd go up to this weather rock and he'd speak to it. The diviners, that's somebody who tells the future. Now watch this. Have seen a lie. And have told false dreams. Have you ever Turn to the Weather Channel. Turn to the news. Get the weather. Hey, you know, we're going to have our picnic tomorrow. We're going to go somewhere tomorrow. <clears throat> and they get up there and say, oh, it's going to be great, wonderful weather. And you get out and it starts pouring. That's thunder. Oh, I, I got this, you know, coming from Connecticut. Oh, good. I got this trip tomorrow. And you turn the news on. Everything's going to be great. You wake up in the morning and it's snow. There's your weatherman, your meteorologist right there. They don't know what they're saying. They don't know. And yet people turn to them like they're gods. And what they're not telling you is they are using God in principles you can find that Solomon wrote by the wind circuits and all that. They comfort in vain. You know, like you said, you Oh, I got big plans tomorrow. It's, you know, it's going to be a nice, beautiful day. And then it rains. It's cold. It's hot as anything. Therefore, they went their way as a flock. Dumb sheep. Anywhere. No particular direction. They were, in, they were troubled. 
because there was no shepherd. All right, now you got a bunch of dumb sheep all over around, don't know where they're going, don't know what they're, they're the, the most stupidest, dumb animal. You know, you've heard stories and they've done movies, you know, a family, they, they go on the other side of the United States with their dog or their cat and they get lost. Three weeks later, they're, they're, they're home, they're sitting in the back porch and here comes Fifi. How'd you do that? You got birds in North America where they lay their eggs in one part of the country and then the birds take off and the little children birdies show up. Hey, Mom, hi, Dad. Oh, man, how'd you find us? Sheep. <clears throat> I've talked to shepherds. I had one shepherd one time tell me, he says, he says, he had a fence and it had a gate. Well, the gate was always open unless, you know, for safety he would close it, but, you know, the sheep would go in and out. Well, whatever reason, he had to move the gate over. And it's only a couple feet. And the sheep are just like, huh? Ah, what's that? What do we do? Idiot, you've been going through that gate for how long? It's just moved over a couple feet. Ooh, what to do? When they got no shepherd, they can't clean themselves. You know, when it says that, that 90, he left the 99 and went and found that one sheep. Can you imagine all the stuff that was stuck to his wool? All the caked on mud? My anger was kindled against the shepherds, plural. I thought there was no shepherd, verse 2. I'll bring that to the church aids today. Spiritualize it. Oh, they're shepherds, but they don't shepherd the sheep. I had one pastor, retired. Oh, I don't do no counseling. I see shepherds now, Sunday morning. Oh, maybe Wednesday night, midweek service. They don't have the right word. I know I know shepherds get up there Sunday morning and they feed the sheep with goat food. Every and the pastor told, Well, I preach every Sunday morning to the people are lost. There hasn't been a lost person that you, you got the same people week after week after week after week after week. They're saved, they're sheep. You don't give them goat food. If they're not doing the job, the sheep are troubled. They need help. They need guidance. They need, need a man to step in like Moses. And when God's like, I am going to, Lord, calm down. <laughs> Relax. Just like Jesus. Father, they're ours. They're dumb. You picked the right animal. You say, well, why couldn't God pick the ass? Because God says, unless you redeem that, that ass, if you don't redeem him with the blood of a lamb, you break his neck. We're, we're living. We're just dumb. Living dumb animals. The world is that ass that hasn't been redeemed and just break their neck, give them death. He said ass. And I punished the goats. There's the second advent. For the Lord of hosts has visited his flock, the house of Judah. There is a second advent. Into the millennium. And made them as his goodly horse. Sheep are not horses in the battle. All right. Those sheep are in Selpicia, maybe. A place prepared by God. They're troubled. There's no shepherd. They're scared. Here comes Jesus on horseback. And now God, now Jesus puts them on a horse. Let's go. Now we go into battle. Joel chapter 2. And out of him came forth the corner. That cornerstone. 
out of him the nail, out of him the battle bow, out of him every oppressor together. They shall be as mighty men, which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. There's the second advent. They shall fight. Joel chapter 2. Because the Lord is with them. The Lord's in front of us. And the riders on horses shall be confounded. You know, here we are. We're behind Jesus. We picked up the nation of Israel. We're living out the book of Joshua. I will straight. Don't, don't ever say <clears throat> God's all finished with Israel. I was listening to a guy today preach in, in this area. And the things that I wish I would. Have, I made sure I listened to what his stance on Israel is. Not only did I check the scriptures, see what Bible, but I saw his stance on Israel. And he, hey, right now Israel corporate is put on the shelf, but Israel can be saved individually. If, if you have anybody who says that Jesus is not God. And or, God is all finished with Israel. You just do about face, do a U-turn, walk out the door you came in, slam it shut, and don't ever go back. And, and, and if you're not well versed in the Bible, don't even try to do compact. Don't try to do battle. Just get away. Don't say good afternoon, good day, <laughs> nothing. Because you deal with an occult. John goes so far as to say an antichrist. You know, see, the, the church today, the, the Antichrist, <coughs> the Antichrist, the Mark. You realize you got little Antichrists running around here? I was sick last week, not feeling well. My daughter said that the Jehovah Witnesses come back to the door again. There's a little Antichrist. My, I trained my daughter and my children how, she said, no, I didn't wish them good day. Just let them go. That's what the Bible said. I can tell you right now, a Baptist church, try to teach my daughter, try to teach her. Whenever you pass the church, pray for it. It's not Bible. You got to watch out. You know, they're all afraid of the Antichrist. We don't need to worry about the Antichrist. We got to worry about the Antichrist. It's called religion. I will save the house of Joseph. Well, I wonder who Joseph was. He's the greatest type of Jesus Christ. I will be. I will bring them again to a place. I will bring them again to place them. I thought God's all finished with them. He said, "Well, this is Ezra and Nehemiah. Now things have changed." Yeah, right. For I have mercy upon them. Okay, mercy. Uh, Titus seventy A.D. That was mercy. How many years have, have they? not had a temple in Jerusalem, but they got the dumb of the rock. Now, God still protecting them. God still loves them. They're still his nation, but they're, they're getting chastised. And I'm telling you right now, it's coming to the tribulation where God's going to take them over, there, over his knees, going to pull the pants on, bam, 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 bam. He's going to tell them, put your pants on, put your belt on, and give me a hug. They shall be as though had not cast them off. They're not ever going to be like they were in Egypt. They're not ever going to be like they were in Babylon. They're not ever going to be like they were in Rome, in Nineveh, in Assyria, and all the nations. For I am the Lord their God. There's the I am in the bush. And any Jew properly trained in the word of God, in the law, as soon as he hears, I am the Lord, his mind should go right to Moses. What's your name? And then you run that reference to the Gospel of John where it pictures Jesus as God. I am the bread. I am the water of life. I am the resurrection. And, I am, and they picked up stones to stone him because they knew exactly what Jesus was saying. It's too bad that Jehovah Witnesses don't. And when they'll tell you, and they will tell you, I've done battle with it. Well, Jesus never said he was God.
I said, I one time, I said, you, and you said you were never smart. <laughs> what? Yeah, thank you. They of Ephraim, that would be the other name given to Israel, Nor. See, there's a lot of names given to the nation of Israel. Israel, Nor, Ephraim, Joseph, Judah. Shall be like a mighty man, one man. Unity. They of Ephraim, that's a, that's a lot of people. Amen, unity. You know, the, the Antichrist is having them teaching the world, the devil, pronouns. How to misuse pronouns. And you got these modern Bibles. When you read your Bible, read the pronouns in the King James Bible. Read each and every word because they're important. And there, plural, heart, shall rejoice as though as through wine. Now that's not drunken state. You got to look in the Bible to, okay, when you're talking about wine, what are you talking about? The harvesting of the grapes, the grapes in the bath, and, and they're using their feet and stomping the grapes. That's a celebration. They're, they're dancing doing it. They're dancing outside the bath. They're singing. They're rejoicing. Thank you, God. Oh, look at all the great things. And it, when did the grapes change? You say, well, what are you talking about? At what point in time did that... The, the Bible says when they went in to spy out the land, they picked up one cluster of grapes and it took two men to carry that cluster of grapes. When did that stop? When did they become little tiny grapes? When men started using chemicals? I mean, if you had to carry one cluster of grapes by two men, I guarantee if you've got that kind of harvest, man, you're rejoicing. That's a lot of wine. Yea, their children shall see it and be glad, and their heart shall rejoice in the Lord. That's what they're rejoicing about. It's all from God. I will hiss for them and gather them. It's a calling. For I have redeemed them. I bought them. He bought them in Ex uh, Exodus chapter 12. That Passover land, when you put the blood over that door, I will, I and death, I and the death angel will pass over you. And when you come out of the house, is that after midnight, you are coming out under the blood. I paid for you with blood. The Christians today, God says, I purchased you. You're not your own. You've been purchased by the blood, by his blood, Acts 20, 28. They shall increase as they have increased in size and population. That doesn't sound like God's all finished with them. I will sow them among the people. I'm going to, I'm going to put them everywhere. They shall remember me in the far countries. So they're going to spread out. They shall live with their children and turn again. That's today. There are Jews in America today. They're, they, they're worshiping. Though they're not doing it precisely according to the law. Or maybe there are Jews that are saved. They are worshiping and praising God. They're going to return one day. That ain't God is done with them. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt, where they're not supposed to be, and gather them out of Assyria. I will bring them into the land of Gilead, into Lebanon. That's funny because that's two names you can find in New England. Why? Is God's promise in America? I can take you to a place called Lebanon, Connecticut. Gilead. That's not Israel. 
that new bright and shiny light in Massachusetts. They said that God's all finished with the Jews. We're in. We're the congregational church. You pay your tithes, your taxes to the church. And if we don't, we'll, and they went by the strict order of the law of Moses as Gentiles. I can show you the history. I can show you the graves. I can tell you the name. They weren't called Baptists then. They were called Separatists. I can show you the place where the whipping post was, and the world marks it today with a sewer pole. A sewer man coat cover. In Norwich, Connecticut. On the green, with the congregational church right there so they can see the whole thing. I can show you the books in the library where at that location Farmer Jim's cows were brought because he didn't go to Sabbath church, the congregational church, so we are going to sell his cattle because he didn't worship the congregational God. He's, he worshiped the separatist God. And they talk so much about uh, uh, Benedict Arnold Benedict Arnold, he's a traitor to the country. I don't think he was. I think America was a traitor to England, but well, let me tell you something about Benedict Arnold. Let me tell you about Hannah Arnold. Hannah Arnold has some other children. I, I don't remember their names. But I got it written down. Hannah had a couple husbands. One, her last husband was a captain on a sailing ship and died out at sea. One of those things where he went out, he never came back. Hannah, her husband, and her children, outside of Benedict, but I read the things with Benedict. Hannah's in glory today. And she's not, I forget, Hannah Arnold. I, think, I forget if Arnold was the first husband or the second husband. I'll tell you what the devil does, and this is an interesting story, just don't cost you extra money. I don't ask you to give online tithing. I make sure everybody can watch this. If you go to Hannah's, I forget her name, I'm going to say Arnold. I forget if it was the first or second husband. Second husband was, was good to the children, saved. When you go to her grave, you're going to find burnt out candles. You're going to find little burnt out spots in front of her grave. You see, Satan so hated Hannah. Wicca, the witches, show up at her tombstone and perform witchcraft. They try to associate her with Wicca. And there, there's no, there, and I tried, there is nothing, no deep. And this is a huge graveyard. And if you walk over, and I don't know this, but if you walk over about a house length, what an average house is, I can show you the, the pastor of the congregational church that put these separatists on the racks, beaten, confiscation, banishment, death. I can walk you from Hannah's grave to Benjamin Lord, who was the, who was the, the pastor of the congregational church. And I can take you over to his deacons of his church. And I can take you to separatists of that church. I can take you to prominent people in Norwich, Connecticut. I, I, I couldn't find anything to do with the separate mill and all that. And you take the born-again separatists. I'm not going to say Baptists. That love the Lord, that love the Word of God, went against the government properly for God. And the Wicca shows up and tries to use her as their... Monument. Now, how? Oh, yeah, Gilly. You gotta be careful. Salem, Massachusetts, where witches were burned. Do you know what Salem is? Now, we don't. Have, we haven't seen Salem, but the last chapter nine, we saw Salem, Jerusalem. Salem in the Bible means. Peace. Jerusalem is city.
Look at the names of New England. Look at the names through your Bible. Now, the Utahians, the, the Mormons, you're not going to find names, though they do genealogies, of the Indians that were never there, they never met, but they have found their names. But you go over to Utah, you got Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City. Where'd you get that one from? And you look at the names of their areas and run that in the Bible. And the Mormons are the great, you know, we're, we're the new Israel. We're, we got the tabernacle. And inside that tabernacle, we got golden plates that are hidden. <laughs> that didn't cost you much. And place shall not be found for them. He shall pass through the sea with affliction. That don't sound good. That's not passing through the Red Sea. Where the ground was dry and the wave, you know, little children sticking their fingers in the water and the fish looking at them like, what on earth? Yeah, can you imagine the fish like, my school's over there. I'm lost. How do I get out of there? What's all these, what's all these things walking between us? Imagine a crab sitting there. Where'd the water go? Oh, what's all these things chasing me? A sea of affliction. You know what that Jew has been through in life? A sea of affliction. One of them is World War II. Concentration camps. Which are still there. And you know, people have the nerve to say, Oh, it never happened. <laughs> I'm dealing with Christians like that right now. Oh, COVID's not that bad. Take off the mask and go into the hospital, go into the nursing home, go where somebody's coughing and farting and sneezing with COVID, and just inhale. Oh, no, no, no. My daughter works for a, for a, a nursing home, caught it through somebody there, came home and happily gave it to her loving father, and I got COVID. I'm a spokesman for COVID. It ain't nice. And I had COVID with a shot. You know, don't get the shot. Don't get the shot. It would have been a lot worse. If you don't get the COVID. Uh, you know why they're saying that? Don't get the 666. Don't get the 666. It ain't time for the 666. There are people up in New York. They're not getting the mumps shots and all that. Uh, why is polio showing up? Uh... Why is my cereal dry? Because you didn't put no milk in it. Put the milk in it. Oh, can't do that. Okay. He shall pass through the sea with affliction. Ouch. And shall smite the waves in the sea. And the deeps of the river. So there's a place in Connecticut called Deep River. I work there. I work for a Catholic school for boys. They were in trouble. I stole my first Bible then. After I got saved. I stole a living Bible out of a Catholic seminary for home for boys. They were troubled. And, and, because it had nice little pictures in it. I was a security guard. I was saved and I stole the Bible that had pictures in it. In a Catholic church. Troubled place for boys. Boy, if I didn't know what was going on with those boys and the priests. By the way, those boys were having relationships with each other, and that's one of the things I was supposed to stop. I wonder who was teaching them that. Years and years and years later. Don't tell me those boys learned that on their own. I hang up with boys when I grew up as a child. I didn't learn any of that stuff. I learned how to play with army men, shoot a gun, and hit a ball, run around, cause trouble, and break windows. That's a peach tree, that's a raspberry bush, and over there are cherries. And if that family ain't home, they got a garden full of vegetables. Listen, 
this my boy who's like Tom Sawyer. Pull out your, you, never, you never knew I was going to have my pocket. I know why my mom, before she did, pull your pocket, take everything out of your pocket. And she spent all day pulling all the stuff out of my pocket. We had all kinds of interest. We had those little, those little soda can, you know, your pull tabs and all that. You get enough of them to make a chain. You can't do that today. How did I get off the network? Deeps of the river shall dry up. The pride of Assyria shall be brought down. There's nothing ever good to be said about pride. Nothing. I'm proud to be American. You're going to fall flat. I'm just so glad of this church. Oh, shut up. I just see you. Shut up. We had such a great pastor. Oh, please shut up. At that point, it's like, Lord God, please find me another church, please. The scepter of Egypt, that would be the, the, the Pharaoh, shall depart away. Well, let me ask you a question. Where are the Pharaohs today? You know, you know the power of the Pharaohs? Here he goes. No, I know here I'm not going again. You know the power of the Pharaohs? Well, they have, I think it's four or five big, huge statues at the entrance of this Pharaoh thing. And what they did is they built that dam over there, that canal. And when they started to remove the water, these feral statues were going underwater. And they had to spend a lot of move, money to move. That, to see, the pharaohs are so stupid. They couldn't, yeah, we couldn't move. The water's getting a little high. <laughs> Come on, Fred. Let's get, let's not, they're stupid. They can't move. They got feet. The Bible says it's all. They got feet. They can't move. They got eyes they can't see. They can't. They had to move them. These were Egyptian pharaoh kings, and they don't realize the Lord's getting ankle deep. <laughs> uh oh, up to my knee now. What are we gonna do? <laughs> you just gonna stand there, you idiot. Americans might have helped do it with all that. You know, if you do that, your American tax money, they're gonna have to give an account. That man and his son, uh, I don't know their names, I, I don't think their names in the Lamb's Book of Life, that did the, wa the, the, the Washington Monument with the four presidents, all that. The, the, the law of the land, no, that's Moses. The freedom, Abraham Lincoln, he, uh, you know, let's that's, that's have brother kill brother. Never mind, it wasn't for the black people. Roosevelt, let's have another war. I mean, uh, whatever it is. You realize what that, that father and son, the son picked up with the father when he died. You realize all they did, they violated God. Thou shalt not have no images and idols before me. I'm a jealous God. And people spend money to go over there and click, click, click. Ooh, hee -haw. Ooh let's go for the souvenir shot. That's how I worship. We don't worship the Christmas tree. We bow down and water it and get the little gifts and say, thank you, Santa. But Christmas ain't pagan. I am running off today. I saw the other day, it's so fun. I, I saved it my face, but there was this dog race. You know, they had that little artificial rabbit. That chased, you know, they chased that, that rabbit around the track. It was so funny that they did. The, the, the rabbit started moving, the dog started going. Then a real rabbit crossed and thing around. The, oh, that was comical. That's me right now. I've gone from the fake rabbit and gone out to the real rabbit. And they say after that, those dogs are no good for running anymore. Right. Feral Egyptians are going underwater. They have no power. And with that, where are the... I don't know who... who the, I don't know who the leader of, of Egypt... I don't know what his title is. But well, he's not Pharaoh. I will strengthen them in the Lord, Jehovah... They shall walk up and down in his name, Jesus, Jehovah. Now tell me that's today. After February in Jerusalem, there was a great big rainbow pride celebration of sodomy that you found in Jeremiah's time, you found in Isaiah's time. And God said, I'm going to whip your butt. It's okay, because we're going to pray to Mary. 
we got a whole bunch of married priests running around right now, and the Baptists come over here. We're in the Holy Land. Mr. Mr. Priest, will you tell me about the places where Jesus walked? Yeah, let me get my cannon out and tell you. Mr. Arabian, can you get can we get on your bus and, and you're forsaken by God and tell us everything about God in this holy land? <laughs> you dumb sheep. Uh, the last church I was we're not gonna go to we're gonna go to the Ark Encounter, the Ark Encounter. You mean the one that's got the entrance and the exit? You mean the one that's got the elevator? Can you show me chapter and verse on that one? And the petting zoo. <laughs> if man would give me three opportunities, there used to be two. Three opportunities. Let me stand before the house a representative with the president and the speaker of the house and give me 45 minutes to preach. I will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and leave Israel alone. Number one. Number two. Bring me to the United Nations to the full assembly with all the, the interpreters and let me preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and leave Israel alone. 45 minutes. Number three, new on my bucket list, bring me over the Ark Encounter and let me stand at the Ark Encounter and give me, give me, give me the strength, O oh Lord, like I was in the younger year. Give me six hours to preach on the street. And at what point, and at what point will the cops be called? He's on private property. He's driving business away. 911, what you mean? Here's a guy over here yelling at us. We got a little square over there for you to go stand. He said, What are you talking about? I'm talking about what they did to a street preacher in Daytona Beach. I wonder what they would do to me over there. And the Bible says that Peter says that Noah stood on that ark and preached. I heard it today with a preacher about it. It was hundreds of years. Imagine Ham, Japheth, and Shem. Dad's getting time for, for lunch. Mom and our wives are going to be coming to bring us lunch. All right, well, hold on. Where are you going? I'm going up on the ark. I'm going to preach. Because you know he had a crowd. The Bible said he preached. <laughs> you got a thing called rain. <laughs> What's rain? <laughs> yeah, God will show you what's rain. Now, like we're going to get in there with all those smelly food animals. Come on, show us God. Yeah, okay, God said, all right, Mr. and Mrs. Campbell, Mr. and Mrs. Ass, and Mr. and Mrs. Well, be cattle and cow, Mr. and Mrs. Horse. <laughs> the Bible says that the animals went. Not no one didn't get the animals. The, the animals came by God, honey and honey pie, into that ark. Mr. and Mrs. Duck. No one had a little problem with the rabbits. I, we only said, knock it off. Ham, separate them two. Because <laughs> they were unclean animals. They had a paw. Rabbits are unclean. They wouldn't have been in that ark place, though they like to multiply. Man, keep them separate till we get out. <laughs> well, you got enough bunny trails today. <laughs>